the screen. There we go. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Ah, that is it. Me in Technicolor. Hello. Ah, good day. It is I. Welcome to Verbal Dirtle Ding Dong. My name, my name is Robin W. Nestlider. I'm talking to nobody at the moment, but there soon will be. Hello, viewer. Welcome to the gang. Andy and Peter. Super regulars. I enjoy you being here. Hi, Peter. I very much enjoy your company. It is pleasant. And Claire. Hello there, Claire. Greetings to you and your gang. You missed a butt, said Andy. Ah, oh, there's no butt. Hi, Tracy and Guy. Wow, I missed a bit. I missed a bit. Aha, I understand that now. Mm -hmm. Hello all, and Christine. Christine Williams. So good of you to be with us today. We have a tremendous story for you all. It is disgusting. So prepare. Brace yourself. It is going to be gross. Did we all have a nice day? Did we all get outside? Hello, Anna. I went outside today, and I went for a flap around the village. It was a very pleasant flap. It pleased me greatly. What did you do? Did you go for a flap? Or did you just do a walk? thing that people with legs do. No. We have a few shout outs today. Our first shout out goes to Chuch. Hello Chuch. How are you? Mwah. We love you lots. Russell asked, did I get my feathers ruffled? Never. I am used to working under pressure. I am pressure. I do not ruffle. Never ruffle. I ruffle. I roll on the floor laughing, but I do not ruffle. Hello from sunny Edinburgh from Catriona. Sunny, wow, that's amazing. In Edinburgh, who would have thought such a thing? Andy went for a hop, skip, and a jump today. That is fantastic. A little bit of hopscotch. Never did anybody any harm. Hop, skip, jump. Fantastic. All right. I think it is time we started the story. It is a 19 minute -er today. Prepare for a 19 minute. -er. Sit down. Get yourself a nice cool drink. Maybe some pink lemonade. That would be nice. Can we have pink lemonade after the show? We can. I am excited. Let's go. Okay, this is Christine. I said, oh, before we start, she had a sit in the sunshine. That is good. Get your vitamin D and you will not get rickets. That is a fact. All right, so today we are going to be listening to Nigel Knit Boy by David Walliams. So now, here we go. Knits are itchy. Knits are scratchy. Knits are scritchy. Knits are a nuisance, but not for Nigel. Nigel was a boy who could never have enough knits. He wanted his hair crawling with them. Our tale begins on the morning that Nigel woke up to discover that he had a knit living in his hair. Most of us would be appalled, but not knits, not Nigel. They would immediately want to evict the knit, not Nigel. He was delighted. The boy called his knit Mr. Henderson. Nigel didn't have a dog or a cat or a hamster, so he treated his knit like a pet. 
he made sure that he never combed his hair. Nits hate combs. Soon Nigel's hair was wild and frizzy like a great big bush. A jungle paradise for Nits. Nigel fed Mr. Henderson tidbits of dandruff. Nits loved dandruff in the hope of training him up to do tricks like leaping from one side of Nigel's head to the other. Soon afterwards, N Nigel heard of another child at school who had nits. Her name was Tina Ting. Nigel wanted Tina's nits more than anything else in the world. He wanted nits, nits, and more nits. At break time, Nigel chased the poor girl around the, payment, uh, the playground. I am sorry. I got ruffled. What do you want? cried Tina tearfully. I'm not playing it. I want nits, replied the boy. My nits? Are you nuts? yelled the girl. Yes, I'm nuts for nits, said Nigel. The boy tripped over a skateboard and flew towards her. Plonk! Their heads bashed, and in an instant, Tina's nits crawled over to Nigel's head. A little dazed, the boy was nonetheless happy. Now, Mr. Henderson had some company. Next day, Nigel heard of a boy at school who also had nits, Colin Clont. Nigel wanted those nits so badly. So he chased Nigel down the corridor and cornered him in the toilets. The trembling boy locked himself up in the cubicle, but Nigel would not give up. He climbed over to the top of the next cubicle and dangled upside down on the ceiling. Nigel and he Colin's head knocked together. Bonk! Once again, the nits sprang across to Nigel's head. Even the school cat was not safe from Nigel's advances. When Nigel was told that Minky, the cat, also had nips, nits, he pursued the poor creature across the football field. Once he had caught the cat, he sellotaped it to his head. It looked like a very unconvincing wig. Still, one by one, the cat's nits bounded over into Nigel's head. Soon Nigel had so many nits that even his nits had nits. He stopped counting at one million and three. Now, you may be wondering why Nigel wanted a head full of nits. I would. Let me explain. Ever since he was a toddler, Nigel had spent his days reading comics. The boy was very short for his age, uh, if you don't count the wild bush of hair on the top of his head and he wanted to be strong and powerful, like his characters in the comics. However, Nigel had a very normal upbringing. He had not been lucky enough to have been bitten by a radioactive spider, or come from a Viking planet, or even falling down a well and being covered in bats. Besides, he found superheroes a little bit boring. They were always doing good. The supervillains were so much more thrilling. Before long, Naughty Nigel had a plan. One morning, as the boy was standing in the bathroom cleaning his teeth, he looked at himself in the mirror. His hair was now not so much of a bush, more of a hedgerow. Nigel could not remember the last time he either cut or combed it. Buzzing in and out of this hedgerow of hair was Billions of nits, forming a dark cloud all around him. That day had finally come. My nit-based superpower is ready. From this day, from now on, I will be known to the world only as... Nit Boy! Best of all, the name hadn't really taken. So now that, that Nigel had all his nits, he went to get a costume made. Fortunately, the boy's Annie Pat was quite good at sewing and put together a super villain costume for her nephew in no time. Nigel wore a cape fashioned from one of his mom's skirts, his dad's old wife runs, Wellington boots, the NB logo for knit boy sewn by his Auntie Pat, and his Nana's tights. I hope they were washed. 
Nigel had his superpower. He had his name. He had his costume on. He was Knits Boy. And he at once began his super villainy. The next morning, he strode into school, his cape flapping in the wind. First, Nigel vowed to get revenge on his geography teacher, Mr. Drumhum. Nigel found geography boring and spent most of his lessons reading comic books. Mr. Drumhum had given the boy detention after detention. Now, Knit Boy was at the door of the classroom. Initially, there were hoots of laughter from the other children. What with his costume and his shrubland of hair, uh, uh, that is not quite what we thought a supervillain would look like. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they laughed <laughs> like that. However, the laughter soon turned to silent awe as Knit Boy called out his first command. Knits swarm! A billion knits that were whirling around his head formed a black mass next to him. Nigel, what on earth do you think you are doing? demanded Mr. Drumhub. Knits attack! shouted the boy. They swarmed on the geography teacher, nipping him, all with their tiny little tiny 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 little tiny claws. Ah! screamed Mr. Durham as he traced out of the classroom. All of his pupils pressed their faces up against the window to watch the teacher. The man was trying desperately to fend off the nits. He, he was hopping and spinning and, and, and slapping himself as he sped across the playground field towards the school pond. Mr. Drumhum then leaped in with a giant splash. He finally had some relief from the knit nips, although when he was submerged in green water, a big frack frog sat on his head. Knit Boy smiled to himself. This was going to be fun. Next, he marched across the playground to the dining hall. The dinner lady, Mrs. Droop, was something of a dragon. Boiled broccoli was her signature dish. Whatever you chose, even jam roly-poly and custard, Mrs. Droop would spoon heaps of her green watery mush on top. Then she would stalk up and down the dining tables, twirling her ladle like a baton, threatening to wrap the knuckles of anybody who did not eat every last mouthful. Nigel hated broccoli. If Superman feared kryptonite, Knit Boy was terrified of broccoli. Now, he was to have his revenge on the woman who made him eat a mountain of it. Nigel, she purred as she strode in. Why have you got your pants over your trousers? Ha 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 ha! Mrs. Smi Droop's smile was wiped off her face as soon as Knit Boy shouted out his next command. Knits to the broccoli! I'm not having your blasted head lice messing with my delicious broccoli, protested the dinner lady. Too late. The nits had swarmed into a whirling tornado. Mrs. Droop stood open-mouthed in shock as his twisted vortex spun over to her precious trays of broccoli. Then the tornado started firing the damp, limp vegetables straight at Mrs. Droop. Splat, 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 splat. A lot of splatting. Soggy floret after soggy floret splattered across the woman's face until Mrs. Droop was a damp, green, vegetable mess. You try and say that with a beak. Now, Knit Boy was ready to have his revenge on the schoolmaster. On that, not the schoolmaster, the headmaster. The elderly Mr. Sourchops was suspended Nigel from school after his 10th detention for reading comic books and lessons. The headmaster was a small and timid man, so Knit Boy thought he would frighten him. Nigel stood in a playground just below the window of the headmaster's office. He closed his eyes in concentration. Knits, shapeshift, he ordered. Slowly, the tiny insects swarmed together to the shape of a giant super knit. They were able to read their master's mind. 
As the boy kept his eyes tightly shut, a look of intense concentration on his face, the giant knit shape surged towards the headmaster's window. It banged on the glass with a huge claw. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Mr. Sourchops swiveled around in his chair and squeaked, No! The giant knit bashed its great head against the window, breaking the glass. Crack! Help! Screamed the headmaster as he dashed out of his office. Running into the playground, Mr. Sourchops spotted a wheelie bin. Checking behind himself all the time for the giant super knit, the little old man pushed the bin as hard as he could before leaping into it as it was speeding away. Finally, Knit Boy opened his eyes and watched with glee as his headmaster trundled across the playground to in the bin. It bashed on a low wall, clang, sending the little old man flying straight through the air onto a tree trunk, clunk. The Knits swarmed back to their master's head as Nigel strode out of the school gates. There was plenty more super villainy to be done. Not long after Knit Boy arrived in the market square, which was teeming with bargain hunters, using his bow. We had a disconnection, so we'll start that last paragraph again. Not long, long, not long after, Knit Boy arrived in the market square, which was teeming with bargain hunters. Using his knits, Nigel spelt out the letters of a very rude word in the sky. Bottoms. Bottoms. One old lady was so shocked, she fainted at the sight. Next, Knit Boy turned his attention to the local toy shop. The supervillain ordered his knits to steal every single item in the store, including the till. The shop owner chased the boy down the street, but he was whacked over the head by the knits with one of his own giant teddy bears. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. Yet there was still more chaos and destruction to come. Suddenly, lights flashed and a siren wailed and police had to be sent to stop Nigel from creating further mayhem. But Knit Boy ordered his knits to attack the police car and they swarmed onto its head screen. The glass became so thick with knits that the policeman crashed straight into the window of an optician's. Smash. Nothing could stop Knit Boy now. He felt invincible. Soon the whole world would kneel before him. All hail Knit Boy. Later that night, Nigel had put on his pajamas and was lying in bed, because even supervillains need their sleep. The boy was dreaming of the next day's evil schemes. However, outside the street, the denouement, it's coming, it's coming. However, outside the street stood a throng of townsfolks, armed not with flaming torches and pitchforks, as a tradition with angry mobs, but with an array of combs. There was one way to do this. Only one way to do this. And they began to chant. Comb his hair! Comb his hair! Comb his hair! Do you think they did that with Donald Trump? The chant became louder and louder as the mob grew angrier and angrier. Nigel leaped out of his bed and peeked out of the window. Looking down, he saw more and more people rushing out of their houses to join the horde. In a swirling whirl of knits, Nigel changed out of his pajamas to become da -da 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 -da, Knit Boy. He marched outside and approached the mob. With his Wellington boots on and his cape, which was really one of his mom's old skirts, flapping in the wind, Knit Boy felt ready to take on the world. His millions of millions of knits had now multiplied into billions, or maybe even trillions. They buzzed around the boy's head, blackening out the scattering of stars in the night sky. There he is, shouted somebody. It's Knit Boy. Get him. 
mob surged forwards, brandishing their combs. The old lady who had fainted in the market square was holding a large bottle of anti-knit shampoo called Knit Blitz. On the label it said, and I quote, The sworn enemy of the knit. This highly toxic and foul-smelling shampoo is poisonous to all knits. It is guaranteed to kill knits until they are totally and utterly and completely dead. Unable to contain her anger, a moment longer, the old lady hurled the bottle at Nigel. He b it bounced off his head, and it hit her on the head, knocking her out cold. The boy stood his ground once again and commanded his knits. Knits, lift! The knits swooped downwards to create a hoverboard under her master's feet. Then they lifted him off the ground with laughable ease. The crowd gasped in shock. This supervillain could actually fly. The boy zoomed through the night sky, performing an impressive loop the loop before the mob. Now go back to your homes or you will feel the full force of Nick Boy. The townsfolk began muttering to each other dejectedly. They knew they were beaten, yet still no one moved. Disperse, Nick Boy ordered the crowd. But his knits must have thought he was talking to them. You know, knits are not known for their intelligence. <laughs> as far as we know, no knit has performed brain surgery or been involved in rocket science. So the knits, can you guess, dispersed. Led by Mr. Henderson, they buzzed off in different directions, disappearing into the sky. Knit Boy looked down at the people below. He gulped as he began to plummet downwards. He tumbled through the air, desperately flapping his arms. Help! The crowd surged out of the way, and Nigel landed headfirst on the pavement. Fortunately, such was the volume of the hair on his head that he survived the fall without any injury. Grab him! shouted somebody. Nigel was carted off to the local hairdressers where his hair was washed with knit blitz shampoo and he was given a very sensible short back and sides. All remaining knits or knit eggs were combed out of Nigel's hair and he had to make a promise in front of the whole town. <clears throat> I solemnly swear to never become knit boy again. You might be surprised to learn that even though he was one of the worst children, Nigel kept his promise, and Knit Boy was never seen again. However, sometime later, Nigel came up with another supervillain that he wanted to be. From now on, he would be known as... Veruca Boy! A supervillain who refused used to wear a plastic sock at the swimming pool, therefore unleashing a plague of Verrucas on the world. And the best part was that Nigel could reuse the cape that was really his old mom's skirt. Wow! That was a doozy. Who needs Justice League? Who needs the Avengers? We have Nip Boy and Veruca Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching tonight. I hope you have enjoyed yourself, enjoy the rest of your evening, and have noodles. They're good for you. Good night.